Director of Education Trust New York. Thank you for your leadership and your vision and your hard work. Um, it's wonderful for Kathy and I to have partners like you who are on the ground actually implementing the programs that we're trying to pass into law, so thank you for that. Um, I want to thank all the other advocates who are in the room. I appreciate all the work you do every day to help our families thrive. I want to thank the YMCA for the amazing programs and child care that you offer here, which is wonderful. And you are one of the groups that will be eligible to apply for this money. So it's very important that we're doing here. Now, there are several income tax breaks that will help millions of low-income households this year as inflation continues to impact the U.S. The Biden administration has confirmed that there are some steps that are taking next to address inflation. The deadline for Maryland residents to claim the student loan debt relief tax credit worth of $1,000 is fast approaching. You have until the middle of the month to apply for the credit which is aimed at easing the financial toll of going to college. To qualify, applicants must have filed their 2022 Maryland state income taxes and have amassed a student loan for at least $20,000 while maintaining $5,000 or more in unpaid debt. However, students are not required to have graduated to receive the credit, and people who went to an out-of-state college or university may receive an out-of-state, may receive a smaller credit than those who attended an in-state institution. The National Economic Council Deputy Director offered further insight into what the application process will look like. He said the application will become available for federal borrowers in early October, and borrowers can expect to see relief four to six weeks after they submit their applications. He told reporters students are advised to apply by roughly November 15th in order to receive relief. And now tens of millions of Americans are eligible for student loan forgiveness, but he might have to pay state taxes. According to the Tax Foundation, Massachusetts is one of the 13 states in the country where he may have to pay taxes on the loans that were forgiven, but Governor Baker said it's not set in stone. The reason why you might have been the reason why you might be taxed by the state on this is that when you have debt forgiven, it can count as income. The American Rescue Plan Act is of a provision that includes student loan forgiveness between 2021 and 2025. It does not count as federal taxable income, and Massachusetts is listed as one of 13 states with the ability to tax it. Consumers who have been squeezed by higher prices may be experiencing a little relief. According to a new report, fewer adults now say they are living paycheck to paycheck as of July. 59% of Americans say they live paycheck to paycheck, and lower income workers have been hit the hardest by price hikes this year. The report found that even though top earners have also been struggling to make ends meet, wealthier Americans feel less financially strained. Of those earning $200,000 or more, roughly 30% reported living paycheck to paycheck, down from the 36% of the previous month. The bottom line is our children are our nation's future. And when we invest in them, we invest in our country, in our values, and in the strength of our future together. While we certainly can't control how our children choose to lead their lives. We can certainly nourish them, we can educate them, we can guide them towards a path to success uh, to launch them into the world. I'm still one of the, only, one of the few um, moms in the Senate with school-aged children, but I'm constantly reminded how vastly important it is to make sure our nation's children are cared for and given the advantages that they need to live a successful and healthy life. As the governor said, about 22% of Americans uh, are under the age of 18, and about one quarter of those kids are under the age of five. So we have a huge childcare need in this country, and many of them do not have the support that they need to be able to succeed. And with COVID, also as the governor said, things became exponentially harder and much more strain on our state. Before the pandemic, there was one slot for every four, excuse me, one slot for every four kids that were looking for childcare slots. Post pandemic was one slot for every eight kids. So you can see how significant the need is around our state. Um, the reason why I worked so hard on these funds in the American Rescue Plan and the CARES Act is because I knew our governor would spend the money to actually improve care and to expand care. And that's exactly what today's announcement's about. These funds make two crucial initiatives possible. Uh, one, a second round of child care stabilization grants for providers. This is direct money to the providers so they can stay in business, so they can offer more slots, offer uh, more jobs to more teachers, to early childhood educators. Uh, it allows them to expand facilities. It allows them to do whatever they need to get their child care center up and running. 
Uh, and the second is, as the governor said, a, a PSA campaign to just tell families that this is available to them. Um, most people are busy. They don't have time to watch the news. They certainly don't have time to research uh, grants online through the governor's website. I mean, that's time consuming and challenging and they don't even know that they can look. So this is going to make a difference. It's going to go right into the families, into the uh, feeds and into the internet of anybody who might be uh, eligible. So it'll work. The New York State uh, with this funding will be able to provide $343 million of stabilization grants, which is a great deal of money. And they can be used to address a broad array of workforce needs from recruitment and retention, wage support, improved health and retire benefits, and mental health support for our staff. And you know, post COVID. example, we learned of cases with the fact that a source of information, although credible, had been known to have been critical of U.S. policy. So we did not consider his information credible. 